Okay, well, can everybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes? Yes. Okay, good, good. Um, so, of course, precisely for the day that we do a, a first open live meeting for the, uh, for the course, for some reason, the internet here in my home has failed, and so I'm, I'm using my cell phone, um, but that, I guess, is Murphy's Law, right? Um, so if I can get my computer to, to hook up, I will, but otherwise, I'll just do it here on my phone. Um, so this is, this is nice to at least see some faces. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scrolling through the, uh, the screen of different people who are in the course, and it's fun to see, well, people from all over the world and some of you I know, and other others of you I don't. Uh, but it's it's good to uh, see, if not meet in person, each of you. Uh, these days, with no travel, it's a little bit a little bit tougher. No. Um, so really, what I'd like to do with today is just give you guys a little bit of an idea of of where we are in the course and what I've been thinking about as far as uh, how to manage the remainder of the course. Um, but um, also to hear some feedback from you all, which is to say, uh, what do you think about some of the ideas and plans that I'll throw at you? And um, what could we do? What could we be doing better? Although uh, I definitely don't have time or energy to do much more as far as time investment. Um, this has been kind of a kind of a nightmare year for everybody, I guess. Um, but in in my case, I'm balancing between a bunch of different time commitments and things that that have not existed before. Um, so where are we in the course? We're in week 25 um, and the, the course was planned for 30 something. Um, the original schedule was to go kind of well into July. So another, another month and a little bit. Um, and then kind of have some, some discussion sessions at the end that uh, we found in the Spanish language course that we did uh, some time ago, um, we found that those discussion sessions were really rich. So we may we may extend just a bit to discuss particular topics uh, at the end of the course. Um, but we're we're let's say we're three quarters of the way through, or even more than that. Um, and that means that that what we've got left is a bunch of things about model selection and evaluation and visualization. And then pretty soon we get on to, um, we get on to a section which I think could be really fun or should be really fun, which is a section on frontiers. And the frontiers are very simply um, what could be, not necessarily, but could be the next big topics in this in this uh, field, and so we've got some really fundamental revisions to the idea of niche modeling. We've got um, some kind of scary new methodologies that are going to be way more computationally in, in intensive, but may also um, offer really cool new insights. Um, so pay, pay particular attention to the frontiers section. I think that you will um, find some really stimulating things there. Uh, what we tried to do was to identify frontier level um, steps in this field that are either just published or just about to be published or soon will be published. And um, in that sense, I think you can you can harvest some things out of 
that section that you can use perhaps quite, quite soon, even though they are frontiers. Uh, I'll just give you one example. Um, Laura Jimenez, um, who's a doctoral student here at the University of Kansas, studying with Jorge Soberon. Laura has been working on fitting response shapes that are explicitly realistic in biological terms. And so those response shapes um, look more like fundamental niches than what we typically fit when we are uh, using more common tools like Maxent or you know, a Glim or a GAM, which is to say what we've been fitting all along can be something that is much more complex. It can have infolds and things like that. So Laura has been working to build tools for fitting convex niche-like shapes um, to, the, to the, the data available. Um, the real difference, I mean, fitting a, a, a minimum volume ellipsoid is pretty easy, but the real difference is that she's taking into account the representation of conditions in the background. And that, to me, is revolutionary. So that's just one example. I think we have six um, frontiers modules for you. Um, and so, so we'll, we'll do a bunch of things like that uh, in the rest of the course. Um, I'm open to suggestions if people have, you know, frontier type uh, ideas. I don't guarantee that we'll be able to include them, but we can try. Um, and I'll certainly run any ideas by the, the brain trust behind this course, which is to say, um, I'm just the person who is, who's doing a lot of the organization, whereas uh, there are a bunch of people that I, that I check in with about ideas, just, just trying to not have this course depend on, on my opinions and my ideas only. Okay, um, another issue that I'd really like uh, some feedback from you guys on is on uh, certificates of participation. Um, I personally would just like to um, Sorry, we lost you. We can't hear you. He's obviously frozen. Just yeah. give him a minute. Yes. Uh oh. Tell you we're me? frozen. We couldn't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I was talking about certificates of participation, and I said, you know, I would love it if something like this could just, like this course, could just be um, use it and get what you get out of it, and I hope it's useful. But I totally understand that many of you either need to justify the use of your time or, and or would like to add this to your, your CV. And so I know the, the certificates make a difference. Um, what we did last time, uh, which is to say in 2018, 2019, when we did a Spanish language course, which was about half as big as this course. What we did last time was when you guys submit questions, we would just tally up uh, the proportion of weeks in which each email address submitted a question. And we used that as a measure of participation. And then we had a, um, not an exam, but, but kind of a, a general knowledge assessment 
that was, I think it was 20 or 25 questions. And it was the sort of thing where if you had watched all of the videos and thought about them a little bit, you would be able to answer them. Um, and those were questions that the, the instructors submitted. Um, so those were the two criteria we used to evaluate um, participation two years ago. 2020 is such a different year, which is to say 2020, we have this, this pandemic and I know that a lot of people missed a bunch of weeks because all of a sudden they were restricted to home or in, you know, maybe, maybe in emergency situations around the house. So I don't think we can use participation as a, uh, as a metric in this course. Um, so what I'm, I'm wondering is, can we, um, can we use similar criteria, but not the same criteria, um, which might be uh, submitting some minimum number of questions rather than a question every week. And um, let's say a, a somewhat expanded quiz of general knowledge, um, maybe 50 questions or something like that. Uh, just how would you all feel about that? Um, does that is that something that would work for you, um, or or do you have some better suggestion? I don't think I can see hands raised, but if you. Uh, everybody's being shy. Okay. I see chats. Uh, makes sense. Great idea. Um, sounds fair. You guys are welcome to talk. It doesn't have to be just me. I don't see anybody saying bad idea or no, I hate it. Hello, everybody. I tell uh, us who you are. Okay, so let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Arif Jan. I'm from Pakistan, and I recently started my PhD at Oregon State University. So uh, some of my lab mates were doing uh, research in ecological niche modeling, and I kind of anticipated that I will, I will also have to do more or less the same. And then I started looking for different tutorials online. Then I found a video from town, which helped me trace back ecological niche modeling 2020. And then I wrote an email to him. <laughs> and uh, I hope uh, he answered. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Okay. Good. Yeah, and then he told me about this course, and I feel lucky to have uh, all these amazing lectures and literature at this stage of my PhD. Uh, I just have one concern about the idea that Town just uh, shared uh, for uh, for certificates. I, actually, I joined the course later. Uh, uh, ENM twenty twenty was already in week. 20 or so when I joined. And currently I'm uh, I'm watching the videos, but currently I'm in week 13. <laughs> and I wasn't, yeah, and I wasn't able to uh, send questions. I have sent, I think, two or three questions by now. So the weightage of questions, I think that doesn't work for me, <laughs> uh, but I'm ready to uh, answer any questions or anything once I'm done or once I catch up with the ecological niche modeling, so yeah. And thanks for everyone, thanks for sharing all the amazing lectures, 
thanks for knowing all the people working in this field and all the literature that you guys are sharing. It's really amazing. And thank you for everything you are doing. Now, the, the biggest thank you is to the, the whole set of instructors um, because people have really been quite wonderful about, about sharing their time. And you know, I'm, I'm sure it's a couple days of work for each instructor to, uh, to put together the talk and, and record it and everything. Um, so everybody in the instructor team has been really great. Um, I think we probably, probably will ask for some minimum number of questions just because the questions make the course work. There's still plenty of time to contribute questions. Um, so, so do your best to get questions sent in each week. Um, now I did see one comment just now, let's see, that was, that was interesting. Um, Facundo Palacio asked, what about doing some practice as well? And that, I, I like the, or, you know, and then uh, Ferdi Lange, uh, maybe some small exercise and some modeling. You know, I'd love to, um, but I'm kind of all alone on this one. Um, and I just can't imagine, um, putting together exercises and checking them and grading them and essentially doing a good enough job at that. Um, those of you who know me better know that I'm fairly technologically challenged, you know, for example, using R or something like that. Um, I got a little too far into my career when, when those tools came along and so I've, uh, I've not learned them and I depend on my students to be able to do anything um, with you know, scripting languages and such. So um, this course, I don't have anybody helping me. Um, last course, we had a pretty neat team. Um, so it may not be possible, but uh, maybe I'll see if there's something that we can put into the quiz that is in some sense practical. Uh, the other thing is, you know, if, if we were to, um, do anything practical, the easy things to do are the things that have been developed here at KU. And that would kind of be unfair to all the other platforms that are being presented. Um, because there's, there's a plethora of really neat tools out there. And I, I really wouldn't want to, um, to lose that. Um, it's interesting that, that this year particularly, there's a huge premium placed on online learning and online teaching, basically because it's, it's pretty much the only thing that we can do, at least thus far in the year. And yet finding funding for, um, for online teaching and learning is really difficult. I mean, we've had going on 300,000 views of BITC um, materials online. And you know they're just videos, and and you guys know you know it's videos and PDF of the of the presentation materials and reading materials and and sometimes some code to play with. Um, so it's not an online learning platform per se, but it has been a pretty rich resource, and I think a lot of people have gotten gotten something out of it. Um, I'd say we've probably had as much impact as as pretty much anything in this in this corner of biology, and certainly on global scales. And yet, finding funding for those efforts is, or at least for me, has been impossible. We've been able to fund our in-person courses in Africa through the JRS Biodiversity Foundation, but we haven't really been able to. Um, they haven't been able to find funding to support, you know, maybe a student assistant or two to help with videos and, and evaluations and things like that. So, um, let's see. Alejandro Bianzoli wrote maybe questions related to how to solve a certain problem and not an exercise per se. That might be a good idea. 
which is to say, I'll do what I can in designing the, the, you know, the sum up exam. I don't want it to be, you know, that you have to search back through hundreds of hours of video, but I do want it to make sure that you guys get the concepts and get some of the really basic ideas. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. Let's see. Here's a comment from Cynthia that looks interesting. Uh, of course, something that struck me as incredible in the course was that there are many approaches to solving the same issue. Perhaps an assessment of concepts or issues that make us think about the model rather than using one or the other tool to solve it. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good comment. Um, which is to say, I think I, I, I had a little bit of a rant on, on this in the last question and answer session. It's not about which platform did you use. It's about which steps did you take methodologically to achieve an overall analytical framework. Um, and so that's, that's um, that's the point of it's not a matter of well did you use enm eval or did you use dismo or did you use biomod 2 rather it's about what inferential algorithm did you use what type of evaluation did you do etc cetera, etc cetera. so just remember that 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 it's it's a lot about the individual tools and the individual steps rather than some workflow. Okay, from Daniela Fuchs, I have a question. Uh, do we have a date for the evaluation so we can finish viewing the videos if we're a bit behind? Well, uh, we'll get through the whole course schedule and you have kind of my working version of that visible to you on Google, Google Sheets. Um, when we finish that, Again, I think we'll do a couple or three weeks of uh, kind of question and answer session, uh, discussion session amongst the instructors, um, because I've got a lot of comment back from you all that the question and answer is quite useful. And maybe what we can do is structure those discussions a bit more and have a discussion about particular topics. Um, I'm writing this down so that I don't forget. Um, so that'll give a, a, a few weeks after we finish the actual course content, um, two, three weeks after that, um, and then, then we would do the wrap up and the evaluation. Tom, how long will the um, Google Doc um, for the links of the videos be up? How long will it be up? Because mm -hmm. I, I, I have really fallen back on watching the videos. So. <laughs> you know why. So. <laughs> Everybody, that's Fola Augusto. She's, a, she's an assistant professor here at KU. And she's been a little bit busy modeling COVID-19 recently. Um, but no, Fola, there's no reason to take it down. Okay. And then the other thing that we do that I think is really useful is um, we package the course into, you know, essentially think of a syllabus, but in that schedule of, of meetings and everything, the links are to lectures that are already existing. And we, we publish that as a, as a uh, teaching module in the journal Biodiversity Informatics. And so, for example, if you, if you understood Spanish, you could go to the teaching model that's published for the 2018-2019 course um, and you know, take that course. But of course, it's all in Spanish. Okay. Um, so we essentially make it pretty darn permanent. Um, you know, everything's still in my Dropbox, so 
I guess some of the links could break if I ever uh, forget and delete something, but but we, we make it pretty perm permanent. Okay, okay. So I can always catch up anytime then. <laughs> Let's see. A comment from Pedro. It, I think it is important to review the assimilation of concepts, uh, the importance of a common language. And in this world full of ideas and different ways of ni making niche models, it's important. Some concept que questions sound good to me. Yeah, I mean, in all of this, you know, over the last 20 some years, um, I have personally felt that getting the concepts right is more important than getting the you know most up to date most cool and slick algorithm or or the fastest processing. I think if you get the concepts wrong, you're going to get the answer wrong, and if you get the concepts right, you might get the answer right um, and then Mokran um, from Algeria says. Maybe the test will be a multiple choice questionnaire. Yeah, Mokran, I think that's going to have to be that way, just because that way I can I can um, grade it quite quickly and efficiently. But what I what I do when I do large undergraduate courses, I do is that I do a a lot of multiple choice, but then I do a few um, kind of longer answer questions that I think get a little bit more. Uh, insight. Now probably what I'll do is I'll, before I create the exam, I'll do a, a check-in with you all um, via a, a Google form, a, a survey, to see how many people are planning to take it. If it's, you know, a thousand, then the exam will be different than if it's a hundred. Any other thoughts about evaluation? Hi, Tom. Uh, please go ahead. Somebody else wanted to speak or... Okay. So, um, myself, Ashna, uh, Ashna Sharma, I'm from India. Me and one of my other colleague, Vineet Dubey, we've been uh, watching your videos continuously. Uh, as all know, uh, since the COVID-19 broke up, so uh, we all had to disperse to our homes and the internet connectivity was uh, low, of course. So even we are, you know, uh, catching up with um, the videos, the pace is a little slower. We are around two to three weeks lagging behind, but we're trying a level best to pace up. As you might see, the likes on the Facebook of your videos come up a little late from our ends. So um, maybe the thing is that, um, see, everybody uh, might be okay with getting certificates for their CVs, but your course was really valuable enough that even if we don't end up having certificates, it's good for our uh, knowledge base and we did learn a lot. So, um, and it'll be really funny that you'll be seeing us interact more now because people know that more questions you ask and the more you interact, maybe they'll get a chance to get the certificates stronger. So yeah, on a funny part. But yes, it has been really wonderful down. Thank you so much for holding this uh, sessions and the question and answer sessions have been really wonderful. So me and my colleague always talk about this thing that, you know, most of the questions which we wanted to ask uh, were already being asked by most of the people around. So uh, the queries did get sorted out. So thank you so much once again. And uh, all the best to all of you for the COVID. So, yeah. Yeah, certainly that. Um, yeah, the the question and answer sessions are are, Certainly, they're a lot of fun. Uh, my companions, I think every single week or almost every single week have been uh, Marlon Kobos and, and Mona Papish. Uh, so they, they deserve a, a big thank you from all of us. Um, and then, you know, other, other people have jumped in and jumped out from week to week. But uh, I'll, try to, I'll try to throw some challenges to the instructors at the end and get some really focused discussions because in the in the week to week question and answer sessions i think we jump around a bit and i guess that's useful i mean we're responding to the questions that you all send but it also doesn't allow in-depth discussion of certain topics so maybe i'll i'll, I'll throw some uh, real specific topics out 
and see if I can't get um, more instructors and more focused debate. Um, but as far as interrupting because of COVID-19, yeah, I mean, I when I moved my whole uh, office here to home, um, first thing I had to do was find a corner of the house where I could actually work and not be not be interrupted um, every so often. And so finally, I found this this um, unused upstairs bedroom that that is pretty isolated. And then I realized that my internet was interrupting, I don't know, every seven or eight minutes. And so I just decided, well, if I'm going to do this, maybe for the rest of 2020, I better redo the internet system. I did that. And now it's, now it interrupts maybe once every two hours. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I totally get it. And We'll build that into the to the sending questions part uh, because I would like you know everybody who would benefit from a certificate and who has you know indeed been doing his or her best to to participate. I would like you all to get certificates for whatever they're worth. Okay, it looks like Maxwell has a question. Maxwell. Go ahead yeah. If you, yeah, go ahead. Hello, everybody. My name is Maxwell. I am from Nigeria. I'm a PhD student from the University of Ibadan. I found uh, the course very, very useful. In fact, it's been the longest course of my life. And it's been... Me too. <laughs> it's been quite an experience that I've never had before. Um, it's true, I've been a bit behind or two, three weeks, and sometimes when I follow a video, I would like to send the question directly to the instructors, not uh, specifically you, because being behind, uh, I don't think if I'll be allowed to send to you. So I try to, con to contact the instructors, and most times I, I don't really have an answer from them. So it's been a bit challenging. I don't know what we do in the future if we are behind, and we would like to at least have one or two questions answered from those sessions. Thank you. Yeah, the questions are, are hard. Uh, we During the typical question and answer session, I think we probably only get to five or six or seven of them um, because we're, we're having good discussion about it, I guess. Um, but but uh, as far as, individual emails to instructors you know I'm, i i i feel bad asking them for their time just to make the videos because it is a lot of work and you know some of them have been um kind of over and beyond expectations like dan warren i think went through all the questions from last week that were directed to him and and answered each one of them but you know Everybody's really busy, so you know. I mean, I, I I confess I haven't been watching the course email account very closely, uh, mainly because I I'm I'm underwater as well. You know, I'm I'm uh, balancing between doing some homeschooling for our kids, grandkids actually, and um, and also you know having to get proposals out to support my students. So, you know, if, if people don't, don't answer, I'm sure it's not out of anything more than just being snowed under. Uh, let's see, I saw some comments coming through. Let's see. Okay. From Fatim, uh, maybe it's not related to the current discussion. I'm wondering if it's possible to have a session talking about how to design our study in niche modeling for publishing. Talk about journals in the area and points that uh, we should take in our study. Uh, learned a lot from this online course. Uh, but the question, I guess the question is how to, how to publish. I think we can do that. Um, you might have to put up with me talking about it. 
Um, but but I think we can we can do that. Let's see. Exam or no exam might depend on university requirements. Uh, European university students can get ECTS. I'm not going to guess what that is from participation with a certain number of hours uh, without need for an exam. Um, remember that our, our, um, our certificates are not official in any way. And one thing that's been frustrating for me is that this is not a University of Kansas course. In fact, with the, the biodiversity informatics training curriculum, which is you know, 500 videos and, and um, essentially the equivalent of a master's level curriculum for biodiversity informatics. And that's something that we developed uh, between 2012 and 2016. Um, I checked into, well, could the University of Kansas essentially grant a distance master's degree? And I had a really nice chat with the, with the director of distance learning at, at KU. And um, he was quite excited about this. I was quite excited about the idea. Uh, it's like, let's just do this. And we had, you know, we talked about a lot of the details, but near the end, one of the other of us said, well, you know, what are the costs involved? And, you know, my vision was, you know, if, if we turned it into a serious master's curriculum with exams and with practicums and all that, that, you know, and, and don't anybody be offended at the number, but I was thinking, you know, maybe $200 in fees might be enough to cover the university's expenses and at the same time uh, be accessible to most everybody and somebody for whom it wasn't uh, accessible, we'd find a way to cover it. And when I said that number, the University of Kansas person just got this look of horror on his face. And he said, <laughs> he said oh, well, the average cost for our master's degrees that are online right now is approximately $15,000. And so we both kind of shook hands and said thank you and went our separate ways. It just, it doesn't work to do this officially. So Wycliffe is asking if he might make a comment uh, after Maxwell, which is some time ago. So Wycliffe, if, you, if you're there, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Um, I'm Wycliffe Agumba. I, I'm doing my doctoral program in Germany, in Bonn, Center for Development Research. Uh, I'll be doing ecological niche modeling of uh, selected wild edible plants in Kenya. And uh, now that we have the pandemic situation at the moment, uh, the course came at the best moment for me because I can uh, start thinking about the modeling before I actually visit the field and collect some uh, ecological relevant, ecologically relevant information from the ground. So uh, I saw the course quite very relevant uh, all the way from the beginning up to now. And uh, together with my supervisor, I think I'm progressing well. I would say that the best part of it is that you introduced us to a number of speakers or presenters. And uh, uh, for example, Janet Franklin, who did a book on mapping of uh, species distributions. And then after re reading that book and then hearing her presentation, all that syncs well. Same to your green book on ec ecological niches and geographic distributions. It becomes very easy to relate the two spheres of the individual uh, author himself speaking and also getting to know the book. Following up the same authors in the... Um, Google Scholar, seeing what they have done in the ecological niches, the mistakes they made before, and the <laughs> new realizations of the same modeling approaches is so uh, fulfilling. Um, considering uh, certification, I think it's in order. Uh, being that much of it will be multiple questions, 
I think it's quite in order that you just, uh, as you say, that depending on the uh, those who are willing to participate in the question answer, in the questions or in the exams, uh, you might alter the questions to fit the needs. Um, I really appreciate the course and I'm really happy that I participated in this. I'm glad. Okay, a question from or comment from Ali Gungan from Turkey. Um, hard for a newcomer like me to digest vast amounts of information about ENM each week. I get it. I know what you mean. Um, sometimes I spend a lot of time figuring out and understanding a single term. Um, I like to learn by doing. Uh, I'd like to see more practical sessions like SDM and KUENM. Yeah, I, I, I get it. The only thing is it's, it's more work for the instructors and the instructors are all kind of volunteering their time. Uh, but then he goes on to say, I'd be happy to see a basic workflow from beginning to end in, ap in ENM applications. Um, so yeah, I, I had thought about doing a, um, a session on kind of the overall workflow and trying to make, you know, you could imagine a, a, a tree of steps that, you know, some of them are, are optional and some of them are not. Um, and so that, that, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll find a way to weave that in. Um, maybe I'll see if the, the instructors would like to, you know, kind of work with me on creating a, a kind of an annotated uh, workflow. But I'll, I'll see what I can do on that. Let's see. Um, Pedro, uh, could there be two types of participation, one with hours and one with with evaluation criteria? Um, probably not, just because I have no idea and no way to know uh, who is watching and who is putting in the time. I mean, there are just some things that are completely opaque to me. Um, so I think we're going to have to kind of do what we can, and I can. Um, I can make the certificates as as clear as I can. And then what I had to do last time around was to write a few letters to clarify. And of course, I, that, that took me forever because um, I didn't have time or organization, but I'll do my best. Um, Henry Juarez from Peru, uh, can we have access to the ENM Dropbox folder? At the end of the course, he could download almost all the classes, references, and exercises, uh, but not sure if he has everything. Uh, yeah, Henry, no problem. It'll, it'll stay live as long as my Dropbox uh, account is live. So um, I think I'm down to the end of the questions. Any other uh, questions, doubts, um, anything that that is on your mind. Hi, Tom and everybody. Um, it's fairly the long year from South Africa. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed the course extremely uh, over the last couple of months, really. Um, I want to uh, encore what Ali said, is that uh, I'm also new to the environmental sciences uh, field been a lawyer for most of my life and uh, decided to uh, to get involved in, in, in uh, natural sciences uh, only a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I, it's been a very steep learning curve uh, for me. Um, we don't in South Africa have any bioinformatics as an uh, undergrad or even a postgrad um, course or structured courses. So all of this is really for yourself. Um, and depending on where you want to go in your ecological studies. Um, and like Ali, you know, a lot of the times uh, with the videos, it takes me an entire two weeks just to digest what you've told us um, and then to try and understand what it all means and then get to a question. Uh, it almost never happens. So, um, but I'm extremely grateful for your efforts. Um, the, the amount of resources that you've, um, provided for us. Um, I mean, sometimes boggles the mind and, and it takes me until two, three o'clock in the morning sometimes just to read through some of it. 
Um, but thank you so much. Um, yeah, whether the certification happens or not, uh, it's, it's not it's not important to me. Um, I think I'm learning more than I've done in the last uh, 10 years in my grad studies. So um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, I'm, I'm at least uh, um, at, at week 24 where we are now. Um, but that's really by watching the videos. I don't understand that probably since week 15, um, but we'll get there, uh, definitely. Uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad. Um, so Vinit is asking uh, some talks or suggestions regarding modeling of freshwater species. Yeah, I mean, um, there are certainly differences about how one would take on different kinds of distributions and freshwater systems are surprisingly different from oceanic systems. I mean, oceanic systems are, are kind of like terrestrial systems, but, but with currents and freshwater systems are so constrained. You know, it's like, I'm in this river basin. I can't get out of this river basin. Um, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, I'm trying to think of who could who could speak to that topic, um, but I, I'll I'll see what I can do about that. Um, so I'm afraid I do have another meeting coming up at ten because my one one thing that's definitely true is that online Zoom based meetings they seem to fill up the day more than than in person meetings used to back when there were in-person meetings. Um, so my day just gets, it gets stacked up completely from nine to one and then, then I do my, my uh, homeschooling and then usually from three to five. And so, boy, I just, there's no time in the day anymore. Uh, so, well, thank you all. Um, I appreciate the input and the uh, two or three of these things will definitely kind of add into the rest of the course. Um, I'm at a point where I need to go through, if you look farther down in the course plan, uh, you'll see that, that um, there are a couple lectures late in the course that are still to be resolved as to who will do them or how we'll do them. Um, so I need to, I need to come back around to that and kind of finalize the rest of the course. Um, so thanks for the suggestions and we'll probably do this again sometime nearer the end of the course. Um, and I'll have thought more about the evaluation. Um, but, but these are really good suggestions. So thank you guys. And um, we'll be back with, with videos um, a week from now. So, Take care, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, Tom.